hello welcome back to your module 2 okay so we will proceed with your unit 4 that is your flight of a projectile in this unit okay uh, your desired learning outcomes is first to define what is curvilinear motion and actually this is already defined in your introduction and then solve problems regarding projectile motion okay so first is curvilinear motion what is curvilinear motion okay if the direction of the resultant passing at the center okay passing the center of gravity of the body is varying the motion path will be a curved line called curvilinear translation so that's it or as simple as if your path of motion is a curved surface then that's, that belongs to your curvilinear motion because if we will try to recall your uh, rectilinear that is just a linear path isn't it okay it is con it is often convenient to study this kind of motion by resolving each parameter in its component so uh, how are we going to study this curvilinear motion is to break this down into its component so for example here in this point p in your curve path uh, you have there the velocity okay at the point p in your uh, curvilinear motion you have there the specific velocity so the question there is how are we going to know that one since this is a curve path you will expect there your velocities okay these are direction that is tangent to a point so their angle actually with respect to horizontal or with respect to vertical are different in any points in this path okay so the question there how are we going to find the direction of that velocity actually that will help us if we will now break this down into a horizontal and vertical components we call this one the uh, y component and the x component okay and then making use of that this is just a triangle so you are using here actually your analytic geometry okay and later on okay we will be solving let's say uh, given time t you are given the initial velocity you are asked to solve a specific velocity at a given time how are we going to solve that one that v we cannot just solve that one using your rectilinear rectilinear what we call this one you cannot just solve that one using your rectilinear equations why this is not a rectilinear this is a curvilinear however if we will try to break this down into components like horizontal then we are focusing only on a horizontal which could be uh, applicable in our rectilinear motion so that we can make use of the equation of your rectilinear we will be considering it's either the horizontal component or the vertical component okay so that is what we will be doing we cannot have an equation directly to solve the velocity the resultant or the resulting velocity at a point we need to solve that one component by component and then put that back to its equivalent resultant velocity so okay velocity and curvilinear motion so that is what i'm saying uh we will break this down into components okay so first is find your vx or your horizontal component of your velocity so how are we going to do that that is a rectilinear motion okay so that is just okay let's say x there is the distance okay of course because x and y is in terms of distance so the derivative of distance with respect to time or displacement with respect to time is the velocity isn't it so whatever your equation here in your uh, x or horizontal all you need to do is differentiate that one with respect to time and you will end up with the velocity vx or v sub x which is the horizontal component of our velocity at any time t and then to get your vertical okay to get your vertical that will be differentiating your y distance with respect to time okay so that will be giving us our vertical component of velocity so now if you have there your vertical and horizontal components of your velocity the question how are we going to get that one that is from your physics okay that is from your physics if you have two vectors in two different directions which is uh coming at the same point or passing at the same point the question what is the resultant if you say resultant that is a single value which is equivalent to all of the values of this uh 
vectors okay so how are we going to do that just make just consider here your right triangle consider here connect that one by uh, create their imaginary right triangle okay I mean right uh, rectangle or rectangle connect that one by imaginary lines for in this V sub X here is the same as that and then V sub Y is the same as this then all we need to do is focus on one triangle how to get this uh, resultant here which is our V that will fall as uh, your hypotenuse of the right triangle so if this is your V sub X and that is the same as V sub Y all you need to do is apply your Pythagorean theorem isn't it? the square of the hypotenuse is equivalent to the square of both legs okay then get the square of both sides you will have your hypotenuse which is your resulting v which is equivalent to the square of your square root of your vx square plus vy squared okay and then later on if you need the angle of inclination or the direction of that v or velocity uh, let's say with respect to the horizontal then that is your theta let's say you can also get that one with respect to vertical okay this is just a simple uh, geometry so how are we going to do that then since you already know your v sub y and then v sub x relate that two sides of the right triangle that is opposite and high and adjacent so that is tangent of the angle theta opposite over adjacent v sub y over v sub x and then get the arctan to get your theta or again if you do not get, uh, have that one right away you can just actually play around with that since by is dy dt and then bx is dx dt then if you'll try to play around with this dt dt cancels that is just the first derivative of y with respect to x if you are having equations there okay but if you have already that value of vy vx then no problem you do not need to worry about this then all you need to do is get the arc tangent to get your angle from horizontal what if the question there what if i want the vertical the angle from the vertical all you need to do is subtract that theta from 90 okay simple as that so the same in acceleration that is the same okay the acceleration the resulting acceleration there at any point in your curvilinear path uh, is just the okay again a component or the uh, hypotenuse of the components a sub x and a sub y so that is the same and then of course your projectile okay this is now your second uh, desired learning outcome we define already what is your curvilinear and how is that uh, solved which is to be brought uh, to be brought down into your rectilinear components okay and now solving problems regarding your projectile motion so that is our next topic here but first let's try to understand what is projectile motion okay the equations developed in the discussion for uniform rectilinear and uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion will be here to be used in analysis of the motion of projectile so uh, we'll try to look at our figure that is a projectile okay it is a motion which follows a curved path or it, it falls under your curvilinear motion and since again we talked about a while ago how to solve your cur your curvilinear motions is to break down into a component horizontal vertical and then in each component make use of your rectilinear motion equations or if you will try to look here if i will try to break this down okay this is a curvilinear motion if i will only consider here the horizontal motion look at the top view of our figure okay if you will try to look there at the top view that is your horizontal or that is your rectilinear motion which is a uniform rectilinear motion isn't it why because there is no okay for example if you will try to throw a ball okay through that one upward and of course that will go back down that is curvilinear or that is a projectile motion okay and if you'll try to look at the movement horizontally is there an acceleration affecting that movement horizontally there is no acceleration horizontally isn't it yes so that is just a uniform rectilinear motion it means there is no acceleration the velocity all throughout the movement all, to, all throughout the movement horizontally is constant now how about the vertical if you'll try to look at the vertical that is just actually if you'll try to look on this side on the other side uh, let's say this is the front view look at the right side or the left side this is what you will see 
a vertical movement which is actually uh, falling under free fall okay that is now uh, free fall okay the component or the vertical component is a free fall motion or in, in free fall if i say free fall there is an acceleration which is due to gravity your a there is your j which is the gravitational acceleration so neat and that will fall under your uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion so neat however since our acceleration there is only your gravity therefore we call that one specifically as your free fall so that is how you will analyze this project time break this down into horizontal and vertical which in in horizontal that is just a constant velocity or uniform rectilinear motion and in the vertical that is just a free fall okay that is just a free fall so now the question there let's say somewhere there on the point let's say at this point you want to know the velocity of that of course you will expect that the velocity here is going that way uh, it is an inclined direction the vector of your velocity ve vector direction of that is inclined going downward here okay it is a tangent to this point of course uh, following the or considering this curve the velocity direction is a tangent is tangent to this curve at that point so the question how will i get that one i need to find out the horizontal component of that velocity at this point and then the vertical component of that velocity at this point and then making use of this equation here pythagorean theorem of that and then we can end up with the resulting velocity at this point okay so that is how we will investigate your rectilinear or your i mean sorry projectile motion okay so again let's just continue this definition here the actual motion of a projectile is influenced by a number of factors such as the rotation of the projectile due to rippling of barrel okay for example of course that is this is just the ideal situation we are considering the ideal because in actual let's say you are going to throw there uh, something let's say you are going to throw there in this uh, path or in this uh, manner throw a let's say a stick so of course the motion of that will be affected by the flipping of your stick okay or uh, of course uh, other uh, other uh, factors there are your velocity when velocity if there is a wind of course that will affect your motion and then of course humidity that uh, that talks about the density of the air and so on and so forth there will be a lot of uh, factors that will affect this one however since again uh, for us to apply your uh, equations we need to consider this the ideal in the as uh, as in it is in the ideal situation let's say this is in a vacuum if we say vacuum there is no other okay uh, outside factors that will affect the motion so that will be perfectly following our curvilinear motion okay uh, so that's it okay which require modifications and result found on the ideal condition so the, again that is what i'm saying ideal condition the motion of a projectile moving without rotation in a vacuum will here be considered so that is what i'm saying consider the ideal situation okay the motion is okay the motion may be studied by treating the components of the motion in the x and y direction that's it that is what i'm saying we will try to study the vertical and the horizontal and if you want the resulting inclined velocities here or accelerations all you need to do is apply your pythagorean theorem using your vertical and horizontal components of velocity or acceleration but in this one okay in this simple projectile since there is no velocity or acceleration unless there is applied acceleration horizontally okay but if there is none then that is just a constant velocity okay so we will just be dealing here with velocities again unless there will be a variable acceleration applied on your uh, project time but most of the time that is as simple as uniform rectilinear and free fall okay so these are the other definition of terms in your project time okay uh, trajectory that is the path of your project time you say trajectory that is your path here the curve path range x sub t let's put that one as x sub t that is the total distance covered by the projectile during the time of flight okay the question there let's say let's consider here you will throw a ball from this point and of course throw that one upwards at a certain angle 
because if you will throw that one vertically it will go back to its uh, original position that is just free fall it will not be uh, considered as project time so let's say if you will try to throw that one uh, upward with a uh, inclination okay it is not a perfect vertical there is an inclination then you will expect that there will be a uh, displacement horizontally if you say displacement that is where it will be landing okay as i've said a while ago isn't it if you'll try to focus on the uh, horizontal component of that that's supposed to be continuously moving since there is no uh, acceleration that will control or that will magnify your velocity so that should be a continuous motion it will never stop however again since because of this free fall okay that will go up and because of the gravity the uh, braking acceleration which is our gravity it will now go back down so of course it will somewhere there hit the ground if that is considered to be level ground and the point there where it hits the ground is okay the we will be considering that as our final point and that displacement horizontally from the original point to the final point is your range we call that one the range that is the total distance covered by the uh, total time of your flight okay the total time of flight if you say flight is this one the time it takes for that ball to rise and then go back down to its uh, original or to its original level okay time of flight t that is what i'm saying that is just the total time used to travel that one and of course maximum height we discussed that one in your free fall that is the highest point it will be reaching okay it depends on where we will record this one it could be based on the distance from its original position or somewhere there if that is a cliff then somewhere there below on the ground okay so it depends uh, okay then time to reach your maximum height of course that will be just the time to reach this one however okay let's say you are considering here a projectile which it will be going up and then going down and it will be striking the same level the time it takes for this projectile to go on the highest point is the same to the time it takes for that from the highest point going to that the same level to your original okay so that is another pointer in your project time the time it takes to go there on top and the time it takes to go back down to it's the same level is the same time so the total flight okay that is your t sub t the total time fl of flight divide that one by two that is the total time it will reach the highest point okay uh, that's it. Uh, recall again, as I've said, your horizontal movement that is just uniform rectilinear, and then your vertical component is your uh, uniformly accelerated, which falls under your pre fall since your acceleration is gravity. So, in this one, recall your formulas, okay? That is just simple as V is equal to S over T. Since there is no acceleration, then you supposedly that will be using this. However, there is no acceleration since this will, so this will just be as simple as. Uh, use, useless so your final and original will be just equal all throughout as I'm saying that is constant velocity and then to find your distance that is just velocity times time since velocity is constant or play around with that your velocity is just distance over time simple as that your rectilinear or uniform rectilinear motion but in your free fall again this is your equation for uniformly accelerated motion only that our acceleration will just become your gravity and you need to consider here, of course, do not forget, just like what we did before, your direction of motion. Since we will be having here different directions, we will be expecting their uh, positive and negative answers. So you need to know how to explain those one. And again, this uh, negative only means opposite direction to its original uh, direction of motion. Okay, so please do not forget about that. DOM, the direction of motion is always the positive. And then, of course, your J there is 9.81. Again, the values that we used before, or that could be meter per second square, or that could be 981 centimeter per second square, or if that is in English unit, that is 32.2 feet per second square. Okay. Now, let's have an example for that projectile. Okay, a uh, bullet is projected upward at an angle of 60 with the horizontal with a velocity of 2000 feet per second find the range in time of flight we are talking here of bullet fire okay so maybe that is a bullet of a gun 
That's why you will try to look at the velocity that is fast, as fast as 2,000 feet per second. Just imagine that one. Okay, so that is the bullet. And that is fired at an angle 60 degrees with your from your horizontal. Okay, 60 degrees from horizontal. So by the way, if there is a given angle and it did not say the horizontal vertical, most of the time, automatically, that will be coming from horizontal. Okay, unless it's stated that is a uh, vertical angle or coming from the vertical. So this is our figure here. So the problem there or the unknown there is find the range and the time of flight. So if you say range again, that is the horizontal displacement from the original point to the uh, final point, which is the same level. Okay. Since uh, I did not say there that that is on top of a cliff, that is uh, considered to be of the same level. So the horizontal displacement in your figure, you have that as your x sub t. And then the total time it takes for from this uh, original point to that final point is your total uh, time of flight, or that is your time of flight t sub t. Okay, so let's solve this too, x sub t and then t sub t. Okay, so these are your formulas here, rectilinear, uniform rectilinear, and these are your free fall formulas. So solution for your x sub t, let's first solve that one again. If you say x sub t, that we are referring here to your horizontal component. So just focus on your uniform rectilinear motion. So again, uniform rectilinear, velocity is just distance over time. So simple as that. But, okay, your given original velocity, your v sub o given is inclined. So neat. So we'll try to go back there in our analysis a while ago. You, you will not be using your original velocity, inclined velocity. Why? Because again, that is at a given angle, unless that is a straight inclined motion. But again, this is a curve. Therefore, we need to break this down into its vertical and horizontal, wherein the horizontal component of that original velocity will serve as our original velocity for the horizontal component of the motion and then the vertical will serve as our initial velocity for the vertical component of the motion so we need to break this down okay so 2000 feet per second get the uh, horizontal of that since we will first focus on your uh, x sub t that is from your horizontal movement so again that is just a uh, tr simple trigo guys okay if we'll try to break this down again Connect that one by right triangle here. Uh, your angle is given from the horizontal. So, relating your horizontal component in your hypotenuse that is adjacent and hypotenuse. So, that is just cosine. Okay, play around with that. That is simple. Uh, that is your simple trigonometry. Okay, so 2000 feet per second. Multiply that one by cosine 60. That is the component which in this. Uh, example, it is equivalent to 1,000 feet per second. So that is our original velocity or initial velocity in your horizontal motion or uniform rectilinear motion. Okay, so the question there is the distance. What is your distance? That is your x sub t. That is the displacement that we are trying to find. So making use of this equation here. Uh, by the way, what is the time it takes? That is your total time of flight. So if I will substitute this one into your original equation, your V there is, 10, is 1,000, and then your S there is X sub T, and then your T there is T sub T. There are two unknowns, so we cannot solve here actually any of the unknown right away. So let me just uh, cross-multiply T sub T on this side so that your X sub T is equivalent to 1,000 times T sub T. Let's consider that as your equation 1. We will be needing that one later on. So there is no other way that uh, we will be finding any of these in your horizontal component. So let's proceed to your free fall, your vertical component. Okay, so for t sub t, use your free fall. Let's try to use your free fall because here we try to solve your x sub t. And actually, you cannot solve x sub t in your vertical since, again, that x sub t is only found in your horizontal. Okay, so go to your three equations of uh, uniformly accelerated or rectilinear motion. So, look at these equations. And if you will try to try, if you will try to look at this, you cannot make use of this equation since we do not have uh, something to do with your final velocity. And so it is. So your only choice is this one. Your that is actually this is derived from your this one. Okay, s is equal to v sub o t plus one half a t squared. However, your s your distance there 
is y since we are considering y distances or vertical distances and then of course your acceleration is gravity so your y there is okay what okay let's try to go here first for your t to use free fall so that is what we'll be carrying but again your initial velocity you cannot make use directly of your 2000 we need to get your vertical component so if the horizontal is cosine then actually your vertical there is sine okay break this down into your sine okay that is sine 60 why again we are considering here your 2000 to be your hypotenuse and the vertical to be the opposite of your angle horizontal theta so sine 60 multiplied to that the uh, hypotenuse is equivalent to 1732.05 feet per second okay feet per second so that is our initial velocity for our free fall or your vertical motion and then of course your gravity okay by the way again you need to know your direction of motion originally that will that is going up so your direct of direction of motion or your dom i did not in uh, put here because uh we try to okay must to get use of that in your free fall so you should know it by now automatically that that is going up originally therefore that should be the positive direction going up is positive direction okay so since your gravity is pulling that one or breaking that one or the direction of gravity is going down again consider the negative but why is it 32.2 because your unit here is in feet per second okay so go to the values make use of the english unit which is feet per second squared so that is what will be your j negative 32.2 feet per second squared and then of course your t the total time it takes to be going up and then going back down since again we are considering here the total flight isn't it so you do not know that one it is your t sub t and then the question what is your displacement vertically what is your displacement we are considering this to be your original uh, point and that is your final point what is the distance of these two points vertically we are only focusing on the vertical that is zero since they will be assumed to be the same uh, level okay that is what we are considering here they are on the same level so what is the distance that is zero okay so if there is no distance vertically that is zero then substitute there to your equation that y will become zero your v original is 1732.05 and then your t there is unknown that is your t sub t one half your acceleration is negative 32.2 and then t squared t sub t squared so how are we going to solve that since again this side is zero you can actually factor out the similarity which is t if i will factor out t sub t one of the t sub t you will have a factor t sub t times this one and then isn't it in algebra equate if that is already zero equate each of the factor to zero so i will equate t sub t to zero that is useless okay we cannot consider that as our time why it cannot be that there is no time elapsed from this point going to that point okay so the, the point there is since we are sure we considered your zero vertical displacement then there are two there are two situations here when it did not yet start y is zero so that is correct y is zero but that is not our uh, or the time is zero okay again i will uh, explain again when do we have a y equals zero or zero vertical displacement is when it is still at the original point so that is your time zero that you can solve if you will equate your t sub t equate to zero you, that is your time zero so that is true but that is not what we are considering we are considering when that will be on this side so if we will equate this one on this other factor to zero you will end up there 16.1 t sub t positive on the other side and then divide both sides by 16.1 okay you will end up here with your t sub t equals 107.581 seconds okay you will end up with that again equating your t sub t to zero is zero which is actually explaining when that did not yet move but if you will equate the second factor to zero you will end up there with t sub t to be 107.581 seconds okay why seconds your unit for time is seconds so that will explain us that at this point uh, at this point there is no time elapsed yes that is true and then as that will go to that point it will take 107.581 seconds okay so that is the other unknown your t sub t so that is what we solve 
what else did we not yet solve? That is your x sub t, which is again hanging in your uh, uniform, uniform rectilinear since we do not know yet your total time of travel. So since you already know that one, then substitute it here so that you will have your x sub t 1000 times that total time and you will end up here with 1,781 feet. Okay, this one is feet per second and that is second, so second second cancels, you will end up here with your feet which is true since that is the same distance. So that's it. So what does that mean? Okay, if you will try to fire a bullet with an initial velocity of 20, 2,000 feet per second, which is inclined at 60 degrees from the horizontal, okay, it will now be the same level to you, to the original uh, point, after 107.581 seconds and the distance from you to that point is 107.581 feet, which is, okay, you can, so, you can say that is uh, reasonable. Why? Because we are talking here of a bullet. You fire the gun. So you will expect 107 seconds, that is equivalent to uh, one or almost two minutes. Almost two minutes, that will be 107.581 fit from you okay originally so that is your example number one okay number two let's have second example so a shot is fired from a gun on the top of a cliff okay we have now a cliff so that is where you will be okay shooting your uh bullet okay so you are, you are 40 feet high so your cliff the cliff that where you are standing is 40 feet high from a uh, ground that is considered the ground and then with a velocity of 768 feet per second maybe this is a low range gun so the initial velocity is lower than a while ago this maybe is a high caliber gun so that is uh, much stronger okay so high with an initial velocity of 768 feet per second and then the angle of the elevation of the gun being 30 degrees. So again, that is fired uh, 30 degrees. If you say elevation angle or angle of elevation, that is automatically from your horizontal. Okay, 30 degrees from your horizontal. And then the question there is find the range on a horizontal plane through the base of the cliff. So we are considering your base of the cliff. So the same, uh, the same alignment as your original point or where you are standing when you shot the uh, bullet so that is the same okay location or the same uh, column and then the range we are talking about is when it will be landing since of course that is a cliff so that will be landing now on the ground okay so the question there is the horizontal display displacement as is as this bullet hits the ground okay so that is your x sub t. That is another unknown. And what else? Its final velocity. The moment is it touches the ground. So of course, there is a velocity before it is, it is stopped by the ground. Okay. So that is the unknown in our problem. So for your x sub t, use your uniform rectilinear motion again. We are considering the horizontal movement here. Okay? Horizontal component of your motion. So that is just simple uniform rectilinear motion. So your V is equal to S sub T again. But again, you need to break down your velocity into horizontal vertical. And we will be using there your horizontal, which is, in this case, your angle is your horizontal. So that is cosine. So 768 cosine 30 is 665.108 feet per second. Cosine 30. Okay. And then the distance there, that is the unknown, x sub t, and then the time, total time of flight, we do not know yet that one. So put that one. So the same as a while ago. So this will just be in terms of equation. x sub t is in terms of t sub t. Okay, let's proceed to your vertical motion, which is free fall. Okay, uh, the same. We cannot make use of that. Maybe later on, we will be needing that one. Because if you'll try to look at this, since there is now the incorporation of your final velocity, however... If you'll try to use this formula, you do not know your v sub f, you do not know yet your total time. So you will be having two equations, to, uh, I mean two unknowns in this one equation. You cannot do that yet. In the same here, okay, 
you do not know your why okay by the way okay you can use this one however later on i will show you you can use this one however so that your solution will be this almost the same as example number one let's do it the same process and i will verify that one by this equation why because your v sub f is actually the unknown and in your v sub o you can get that one as the sign of this one and then two times your j is already known of course your y that is given that your cliff is for 400 feet high so that is your distance which you can consider that as your negative 400 why your original motion is going up so that is your positive so this is going down distance so that is negative 400 so we can make use of this so this is simple equation but okay let me again just solve that one just like your example number one and let's verify this one using this equation but of course if you have if you are having this one as your activity you can choose this one right away since this is a simpler equation okay so let's consider this one first okay again uh, your y there that is your negative 400 feet of course negative y again because your original direction is going up so your negative is going down which is true negative 400 feet and then your total, total time of travel because that is what we are considering the time it takes to go up and then go down to your ground <clears throat> that is your t sub t unknown and then your gravity is again negative 32.2 feet per second squared substitute that one to this uh, equation your initial velocity by the way is again vertical component which is sine so that will be 384 okay substitute negative 400 is your y uh, your v sub o is 384 t sub t or your t is t sub t and yet unknown and then one half times 32.2 negative t sub t squared okay the same equation however this is not zero so you cannot just factor out t sub t there you need to play around with this this is now a quadratic equation guys quadratic equation how are you going to solve that one you can make use of factoring but uh, I do, you cannot do factoring here because this is decimal you cannot just do there as simple as uh, trial and error factoring uh, maybe completing the square yes but since you already have there your ready derived formula which is your quadratic formula you can make use of that quadratic formula okay Okay, so quadratic formula. Okay, so okay, let me show you that quadratic formula. You might forget that one, so let's just try to recall. If you are, for example, you have there your, uh, for example, only guys, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is your form of your general form of your equation. All you need to do is uh, find the value of x, isn't it? This is your quadratic formula plus minus square root of uh, b squared minus for ac all over to a where in your a b c here are just the coefficients of our equation so you need to arrange that one into this form a b c consider the signs consider the signs substitute it there and why is it plus minus because you will expect two values isn't it that is the squared so you will expect two values of x use first the plus and then use the minus you will end up here with two different values of x so if you will try to do that our variable here is t sub t so Instead of x, you will be solving two values of t sub t. The first one is your negative one. You will be ending up there with negative one. Wherein, if you will try to analyze, there is no such as negative time. You cannot apply a flashback in your motion, isn't it? You cannot do flashback in your motion. So this is actually irrelevant. Your negative one is irrelevant. Okay, neglect that one. That is not true. There is no such as negative time in our project time. Okay, now you will try to use the plus or minus. It depends here. The first one uses the plus maybe or the second one uses the minus. I forgot how I saw this one but this is just the difference. All you need to do is change the other one to minus or change that one to plus. And you will end up here with 24.851 seconds. That is true. That is a positive supposedly. And if that is our t sub t, go back here to your derived equation in your uniform rectilinear motion, substitute that one, multiply to your 665.108, you will end up here with 16,528.60 feet. That is our range. Okay? That is our range. Okay? So again, let's try to look at this. If you try to substitute your negative one, that will just be negative 665.108, which is not uh, related to your motion why 
you fired this one and it gave you negative. It, what do we mean by negative? That means on the other side. So that is actually uh, not true in our situation. So neglect. That's why we, we should neglect that negative one here. Okay. Then, if you'll try to continue, we are not yet done with your B sub F. Then that's the time you will go here. Okay, to make use of that. That's the time you will go here to make use of that. Okay, so, by the way, uh, again, I will show you that solution later on. But since, again, what we can use here is your, okay, the B sub F there is inclined, isn't it? The B sub F here is inclined. The final velocity here is inclined because, of course, the motion is still uh, curved. So how will we find that inclined velocity is again by Pythagorean theorem, go back there to our introduction here. For you to find the resultant velocity is to get the, apply the Pythagorean theorem using your horizontal and vertical component of the velocity at that point. So that is what we will be doing. At this point, we will consider the vertical which is going down. You will expect that it's going down, isn't it? And the horizontal is going to the right. Okay, so the question there is, uh, what is your V sub Fx? Let's put that one as V sub Fx. That is your horizontal and then V sub Fy, your vertical. Okay, using this equation that we derived a while ago. Okay, so your V sub Fx there is your 665.108. 665.108 feet per second. 665.108. Why? Isn't it? As we said, that that is just a uniform rectilinear. So the velocity, original original velocity horizontal is the same all throughout. So what we solved in this one, uh, uniform rectilinear, that is your original velocity horizontally, 665.18. So that is your V sub fx. Okay. There will be no change in your velocity horizontally since there is no acceleration. Okay, now how about your V sub y? That is where, uh, that is what we will be getting from your free fall, isn't it? It is from your vertical component of motion. So that is the time that we will be using this one. Okay, that is the time we can be using this one or that one. But first, let's make use of this. That is my solution here, but I will show you again later on how we will be using this one. Okay, so V sub f is the unknown uh, v sub f y why because again we are considering only the vertical motion so that will be just become v sub f y v sub o y is your what is your original velocity vertically that is your 384 and then plus j t sub t your j there is negative 32.2 and then your total time of flight is we saw that one originally which is 24.851 24.851 therefore you will end up here with okay uh, 384 minus 32.2 times this total time will end up negative 416.202 feet per seconds so what does that mean that the original velocity is going up which is positive 384 and then the final velocity since that is now going down at this point which is negative 40 uh, 6.202. As I am saying a while ago, if that is the same level, the velocity here is the same as the velocity there. Okay, that is what I'm ex explaining in projectile. However, they are not the same elevation or, or level already, so they will you will expect that uh, from zero that will now be increasing its velocity because of the acceleration, which is the gravity. The motion is now going down and your acceleration is now going down. Therefore, from zero velocity, it will now be magnified. So here, the velocity here should be the same as that, which is just 384. Therefore, what you expect on the point below those uh, le level is higher velocity, which is now 416. But negative, why? Because it is opposite from your DOM. Okay. So you will end up here now with your V sub F y to be negative for 16.02 now what we need is your v sub f so make use of your horizontal and vertical components horizontal and vertical get the uh, square and the square root of that you will end up here with 
0.784.60 feet per second, which is true. Why? It should be greater than your original. Your initial here again, as I'm explaining, is 768. So you will expect that at this point, the same elevation as that is also 768. However, that is again lower. So again, because of gravity, it will magnify. So from 768, it will now become 784.60 feet per second. So that is the velocity before it hits, just the moment it hits the ground. Okay, so that's it. So now let me show you again, uh, what if we will solve this one? Your V sub F actually is the same. Okay, this is what we used a while ago. Uh, I will show you that we will be using this one that will still be the same. Okay, so using again your B sub F, B sub F square minus B sub O square equals 2JY. Okay, your B sub F is the unknown, but that will become B sub F Y square. V sub O, okay. V sub O, let's put that one already on the other side since this is the unknown that is given that is already known also. So put that one on the other side, it will become positive. Okay? That will become positive. What is our V sub O? That is 384 squared. Okay? 384 positive again, yeah, but this uh, total sign of that will be negative, so it will go positive. But this one, okay? Plus 2, what is your gravity that is negative? Okay, again, negative because opposite direction with your UM. 32.2. And then Y, what is our Y? That is what we, uh, I explained a while ago, your distance from the original point is downward, which is 40 feet. That is your height. So indeed, that is the height of our, that is the height of our uh, clip. So let me just charge this one. Okay, so again, that is your height of the clip, which is negative because it is going down. So negative 400. So let's try now to solve this one. So for us to get your VFY, get the square root of both sides. So VFY is equal to the square root of this, okay? 384 squared, okay? 384 squared. This will be uh, minus minus, that will cancel, it will become positive. What is the equivalent of that? 2 times 32.2 times 400, you will end up here with 25760. 25760. Okay, get down the square root of the total of this, you will have your DFY, which is, okay, square root of answer plus 384 squared. Wait, 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 wait. 384, sorry, sorry. 84, and then our answer there, how will it go? Is 25760. Okay, so our answer here is 416.192. If you try to go to our answer there, how will it go? Okay, if you try to go there in your answer, how will it go? Okay, by the way, the question there, why is it? It is not minus because actually this is a square root, so you will expect expect an answer of a square root to be plus minus, and it's up to you to decide. Not plus because the original motion is going up, but this time it is now going down, so maybe not your plus. So we will be using your negative. Okay, again, okay. it's for you to decide. That is negative. Okay, that is negative. However, the question there is, why is it that a while ago that is 416.202? Again, in the first place, the value of this, okay, uh, the value of this gravity here, uh, no, no, no problem with that, since we already used, we also used that one in our uh, original solution, but uh, if you'll try to recall a while ago, okay, that is for the difference is uh, made because our solution a while ago, that's why that is 202, is, isn't it? Look at this. Your total time of flight is rounded. This is not the exact value here. That is rounded. And we use that one in your V sub F. In this solution, using this formula, isn't it? You need your time. That is why we use that one here. And this is again rounded. Therefore, you will expect that this is not exact value. So if you'll try to go in our solution here, a while ago, that is point, 
192, that is the exact value since we use there all the exact values. Okay? However, that is just decimal. So if you will try still to input that one as negative 416.192, since the difference is actually 0 0.00 something, you, is, you will still end up here with 784.60. Okay? That is, that is what I'm saying. Uh, we can make use of any of the equation as long as that is applicable. Okay? And the original solution here, we use this equation and that equation. Now, in my alternate solution there, way of checking, you can use that one as a way of checking, I use this third equation here. Okay, so we still end up with negative 416, but that will just be different with decimal. However, I explained that one. And you will still end up with 784.60. Okay, so that is how we ended up with your X sub T, your range, and your uh, final velocity before it touches the ground. Okay. So that's it. Then, then answer your example number three. This will serve as your oh, just follow the numbering. And I already uploaded that one. So just look at your new activity in your canvas and that is where you will be uploading. And actually you can see that one in the uh, on the picture itself of the activity. You can see that one what is the numbering okay, of your activity. Okay. So that is your problem. So let's just uh, recall your concept. Projectile motion problems can be solved by simple combination of principles developed in your uniform rectilinear motion and uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion as observed in three falling bodies. So that is what I, mean. I keep on repeating a while ago. You cannot have a direct analysis of your curve, curvilinear motion. You need to break this down into vertical and horizontal components. Which in this case of projectile, okay, that is the case of your projectile, your horizontal movement is just uh, constant velocity or uniform rectilinear motion. And the vertical component is just a free form, okay? So that is your projectile motion. So thank you very much. If you have a question, comment below again or we will discuss that one on our next live meeting. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. Please do not forget your activity.